In this video, we will learn how to get started with Unity's High Definition Render Pipeline or HDRP. We will also learn how to convert your existing project into HD Render Pipeline. HD Render Pipeline is used to achieve high fidelity graphics and photorealism. So if you want to use Unity for movies, AAA games or architecture visualization project, then this video is for you. So without wasting your time, let's get started. Before I start, I want to tell you that this video is mainly for Unity 2019.3 or any newer version because of some modification in newer updates. So if you are using 2019.2 or any previous version, then please follow my previous video about HD Render Pipeline. There are a few ways to implement HD Render Pipeline in Unity project. Let's see the first and easiest method. Open up Unity Hub and from this drop down button, choose the Unity version you want. Next, type the name of your project in the name section and choose a location where you want to save your project. And then from this template, choose High Definition RP template and just click on Create. This will automatically create a fresh new Unity project with HD Render Pipeline already implemented. It will take a few seconds and once it's done, it will open up Unity Editor with this sample scene. As you can see, it has a direction light as a sunlight, a sky and fog volume, a basic post processing to correctly visualize the scene and a light prop which you may not be needed at this moment. Now you can delete or hide this example asset and import your own 3D asset to work in this pipeline. Let's see the second way of implementing high definition pipeline and I think it is the better way because in this method you clearly understand what are the major required things to work in HD render pipeline. Alright, as you can see this time I have opened up a fresh empty Unity project and for this project I'm gonna import this asset and we will convert this scene into high definition render pipeline. So click on import. Okay, so now you can see that I have imported the asset, uh, even though there is some problem with the light map, but don't worry, we will fix this. So let's implement the high definition under pipeline. First go to windows and package manager. And from here, choose the high definition under pipeline. And keep in mind that if you are using 2019.2 or any previous version, then you need to enable this show preview packages because in the previous version, the HDRP is a preview package. But you can, as you can see in 2019.3, it's a verified package. Click on install. It will take some time. Now, if you click on this little triangle button, you will see that there is one more update of HDRP is also available. But as you can see that this is not a verified package. So if you are using HDRP for production, then I would recommend you to only use this a verified package. But for this demo, I'm going to update this package. First, create a camera and press Ctrl Shift F to align the view. Now, first thing you need to do, go to your asset folder, right click, create, rendering, and create a new high definition render pipeline asset. I call this HDRP. Then go to edit, project setting, graphics, and from this section, choose the HDRP asset we have just created. And now you see everything is converted to pink. And that is because the default shader are not supported in HD render pipeline. And we are also getting some error about HD render pipeline. But don't worry, we will fix them in a minute. To fix this issue, go to Windows, Render Pipeline and select this HD Render Pipeline wizard. Here you can see all the errors regarding the HD Render Pipeline. To fix all the issue, simply click on this fix all button and it will automatically fix all the errors for you. It will basically change your color space from gamma to linear. It will also change your light map encoding. It will ask you to create a default template for new scene. Simply click create one. And now all the problems are fixed but still our scene is looking pink. The reason why our scene is looking pink because we haven't converted all the materials into high definition materials. To convert all the materials, simply click on upgrade project materials to high definition materials. Click on proceed and voila, nothing happened. The reason why this option didn't work because it only convert Unity's standard materials to high definition materials. So if you're using any kind of custom or third party shaders, then they will not be converted into high definition materials. So before upgrading your project to high definition under pipeline, make sure all the materials are Unity's standard materials. Otherwise you will need to convert them manually. Now if I go to materials, you see these materials are using Unity's mobile diffuse shader. And the HD render pipeline only support Unity's standard shader. So we, how do we convert these materials into high definition materials? Well, there is a trick for that. First select all the materials, exclude this one and this one also because it's a different material and then from this option choose standard materials and now you can see all the materials are using now unity the standard shader and all the diffuse texture is also applied in the albedo slot so if you're not able to convert your materials like this way 
then you need to first convert them to Unity's SD render pipeline lit shader and then manually hook the diffuse texture in each slot. So let's again go to Windows render pipeline, SD render pipeline wizard and try to convert these materials again. And voila, this worked. Now all the materials are converted into high definition lit materials. But still you cannot see any kind of texture on these objects and that is because of this metallic zero value. So to fix that, again select all the materials, deselect the sky and this dust. Then change the metallic value to 0.5 or maybe 0.7. This is just a quick solution for this demo. If you are working on a real project, then you also need to create this additional mask and normal map in order to create a photorealistic material. If you don't know how to create this additional mask and normal map, then please watch my video about materialize in which I have explained the whole process how you can create this additional map and use them in Unity. Now let's add a sky to the scene. To do that, right click, volume and choose the sky and fog volume. In the previous version, this was rendering and scene setting. But in the newer version, it is changed to the sky and fog volume. And you see now our scene is looking horrible. So first go to lighting and clear this big data because this light map is not supported in HDR pipeline. And now it's looking much better. And as you can see in the sky and fog volume, it has added a physically based sky for our environment. You can also use your gradient sky or a HDRI sky. This physically based sky has a lot of parameter to simulate any kind of sky effect. For example, in the horizon and zenith tint, you can change the color to create some kind of interesting sky effect. The good thing about this physically based sky that if you select your direction light and change the sun's position or angle, it will automatically change the color of sunlight according to the sun's position. But I will cover this physically based sky in a separate video. For now, just change the sky to HDRI sky and see how we can use our own HDRI image as a sky. Okay, I have downloaded this HDRI from HDRI Heaven website. Link is given in the description. To use this HDRI, first in the texture shape, choose cube. And in the resolution, change that 4096 because this sky is a 4K sky. Then go to sky and fog volume. And from this add override button, go to sky and use an HDRI sky. Click all to enable all the option. And from this HDRI sky slot, choose this abandoned parking 4K HDRI. And now you can see our HDRI is perfectly visible in the scene. If you can't see the bottom part of this HDRI, that is because of this fog. For now, I just disable this fog. As you can see, even after adding HDRI image, our lighting is not looking so appealing. Don't worry, I will fix that in a minute. But before that, I want to show you a quick way to light your scene. To do that, first I disable the sky and direction light. If you go to the asset folder, you will find this HDRP default folder. This folder was created when we use a render pipeline wizard to create a default scene root. So now if I drag this default scene root into the scene, voila, our scene is looking much better. All the lighting is already set up in the scene. And that is because this default scene root has a main camera, a directional light with a proper light color and proper light intensity. Yes, this is 10,000. The 10,000 is really very high, but that is physically accurate for sun. And in the sky and fog volume, it is using a default HDRI that comes with this Unity's package. So if you want to use this default HDRI, you can also find it in this folder. And the exposure of the sky is set to 10. So you can also use this default scene root in your scene for lighting. But keep in mind, if you made any changes to this sky and fog volume, it will not be saved. Because as the name said, it's the default settings. Let's add a lift gamma gain. And you save your scene like this. But next time when you come back, it will automatically reset all the settings. You can see that option is not there. So let's set our direction light and sky properly. First delete this scene root. And in the direction light, I change the intensity to 10,000. In the shadow resolution, I'm using ultra just for demo purpose. And in the sky from fog volume, I change the exposure to 10 or maybe nine. Also change the direction of this sunlight. For the color temperature, I'm using 5,500. 
and now it's, it's looking much better but still not looking good let's also add a reflection probe because right now we are getting some unwanted reflection to add a reflection probe right click light and choose reflection probe go to the top section and increase the box size to cover the whole scene Let's also quickly bake the lighting in the scene because right now it's looking very dull. To bake the lighting in the environment profile, use the profile you are using in Sky and Fog volume. Click on Sky and Fog and then click on this profile. And in the environment profile, assign this Sky and Fog profile. From the static lighting sky, choose HDR Sky. Mode I set to bake indirect. And I'm using a GPU to quickly bake the lighting. Let's decrease the resolution to 10. Turn off compressed light map option and just bake on a default setting. And now you can see the lighting is baked. You can go to bake light map and see the light map. And in 2019.3, they have introduced this new light map exposure. So now you can decrease the slider to see the light map. And uh, you can see uh, it did a very basic job, but yeah, it's looking much better. But since it's not a lighting tutorial, so I will not go into the details. So now our scene is looking much better than before. Okay, here I want to mention one more thing that is new in 2019.3. If you look at the sky, we are seeing some glow. And if I move my camera slightly up, you can see my scene is getting dark. So why this is happening? Why the exposure of my scene is changing? So if you go to edit, project setting and HDRP default setting, here you can see all the default setting when you first implement the HD render pipeline package. And here in the bottom you can see there is a default volume asset. And here you can see that there is a bloom, a exposure, a visual environment and some other stuff are already implemented. This may sometime lead to a confusion because people from previous version don't know about these settings. And when sometimes their scene looks weird, they don't know how to fix it. For example, if every object your scene is glowing, then just turn off this bloom to fix the issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this option from here and I will create my own post process volume and reapply all these parameters. So to create a post process volume, right click again, go to volume and choose this global volume. I call this post process, click on new to create a new profile. And first let's add ambient occlusion, then tone mapping, a bloom and exposure. Then in the exposure, you can use automatic, but I'm going to use fixed. Now you can control the bloom from this parameter. For the tone mapping, I'm going to use ACES. If the scene is looking too dark after applying the tone mapping, just decrease the exposure. And also apply ambient occlusion to generate some contact shadows. And let's also re enable the fog and increase the distance to add a little bit of fog in our scene. Okay, that's much better. Now you can also add some more options to change the toning of your scene. For example, let's use shadow midtone highlights to change the color of the scene. After adding the color correction, it's looking much better. And finally, to fix this jagged edges, go to your camera and choose temporal anti aliasing You can clearly see a huge difference before and after. Although if you go to your HDRP asset, there are a lot of options you can choose and change according to the, your scene settings. For example, the screen space reflections are turned off by default. So if you want to use them, just enable this option. And now the screen space reflections are working in your scene. Actually, right now, I don't want you to confuse by changing these parameters. I maybe cover them in separate videos according to the scenes requirement. And since my main goal to create this video was just to show you the updated HDRP workflow in Unity's latest version. That's why I will not go into details. I know some of you guys must be thinking that why this scene is still not looking great even after applying the HD render pipeline. So the answer is that we haven't used any special feature that are only available in HD render pipeline such as volumetric fog, subsurface scattering, etc. 
and also we didn't set up our material properly. I will cover that topics in different video. So if you still have any issues with new HTML pipeline, please ask me in the comment section or you can join my discord server. Once again, I would also like to thank Hannah Sinconan, Adam Smith, Anton Konoplyanchenko, Dimdu, Henry Weaver and Nicholas Gennady Kota for supporting me on Patreon. So that's pretty much it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.